All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the use scroll hook from Framer Motion. And the use scroll hook is going to allow us to do scroll linked animations or scroll scrubbed animations. Now, if you saw my previous video talking about scroll triggered animations, you might remember that I showed this Apple iPhone page. And at the top of this page is a good example of a scroll linked or scroll scrubbed animation. So check out this video here and notice how its scale changes as I move the scroll bar. So check out here how it starts scaling down. And then I can reverse that and it starts scaling up again. And that's a scrubbing action. It's like a scrub playhead where the user is controlling the animation or controlling the scaling in this case. So let's flip over to our code and here I have a component called scroll linked and inside of it is a simple motion div. And at the moment it's outside of the visible viewport and that's because I've given the body elements a height of 300 VH just so we can get some scrolling on the page. But if we scroll down you can see that motion div being this blue box here. Now just as in the example we saw for the iPhone page, what I'd like to do is control the scaling or the scaling animation of this box based on the progress of the scroll bar. So what we're going to do is start by bringing in the use scroll hook from Framer Motion. And let's use it here inside of our component. And we're going to do so by declaring a constant. And we're going to set this equal to use scroll. And use scroll is going to return to us motion values. Those are going to be scroll X, scroll Y, and then scroll X progress and scroll Y progress. Here we're just going to be focusing on scroll Y and scroll Y progress because we're dealing with scrolling up and down the page. But if you were working on something that had scrolling horizontally along the X axis, then you could use scroll X and scroll X progress in just the same way. So let's start out by getting scroll Y. And what I want to do is I want to look at the motion values that are being outputted from this use scroll hook as we scroll up and down the page. Now also previously I talked about use motion value event. And we can use that here to listen to change events when we scroll and monitor the resulting motion values to the console. So let's use use motion value event. And the first thing we're going to pass in is the scroll Y motion value. And the event we want to listen to in particular is called change, a change event. And then in the callback function, we get access to the value as the change event is fired. And we can simply log it out. So let's go back into the browser and scroll up. And let's open our console. And here I've opened it up in a separate window since we're scrolling up and down the page. But now as I scroll down, notice this stream of motion values that we're getting. And these are representing the pixel amount that we've scrolled down the page. All right, so now we've got access to the motion values being outputted based on the scroll position. But how can we use those motion values to actually affect the scaling of this blue box? Well, we know in the style object that we want to do something to scale. And basically, we want to have that scale being dynamically updated based on the motion value. But in order to really make good use of it, we're going to bring in another hook that we've already seen, and that's called use transform, because we want to take those motion values, which remember again, represent the number of pixels that we've scrolled down and transform them into some reasonable scale values. So let's use our use transform hook. And here we're going to take our scroll Y motion values. And then we're going to set up two arrays. The first one is going to be the input range. And the second one's going to be the output range that we're mapping to. So here's our first array and here's our second array. So what values are we going to put in here? What are our input and output ranges going to be? Well, let's go find out. Fortunately, we have access to all of those motion values that we're logging out to the console. So let's do a little bit of detective work. So first of all, let's comment out a couple of these things just so we don't get an error. And then let's open up our developer tools and let's pay attention to the values we're getting as we scroll that box into view. So it enters about here, which is pretty close to around 200. And we keep scrolling and let's say around here. So around here, we're at about 800. 
So let's say we want to use that as our input range from approximately 200 to 800. Let's bring back our use transform and let's put those values into the input range, 200 to 800. And then let's map that to the output range. And this is where we're going to define the range of our scale. So at 200, let's say that we want the scale to be a normal scale, which is 1. But then as it gets to 800, we want to scale it to, I don't know, 1.5, let's say. Now to actually use these transform values, let's create a const, and we can call it scale. And that way we can use JavaScript's property shorthand to just point the scale from the style object to the transformed motion values. So now with this mapping, let's see how our box animates. See, so it starts animating almost right away, and it ends about here. So that entire scaling occurs over that range from about 200 to 800. And obviously, we can customize that. We can tailor it a bit. So let's say we wanted that scaling to occur over a bit of a wider range. So maybe instead of 800, we can do 1200. And let's see the difference. So it continues scaling a bit longer. And we can set a greater amount of scale over that range if we want, like 1.75. And so now we've got this. Right, and all that scaling is linked to the progress of the scroll bar. And that's scroll scrubbing. And if you remember earlier, I mentioned that use scroll returns four different motion values. So not only scroll Y, but also scroll Y progress and scroll X and scroll X progress. So the difference between scroll Y and scroll Y progress is just that scroll Y progress tracks the progress in terms of a percentage, and it goes from 0 to 1. So let's take a look at that. So now instead of getting scroll Y from use scroll, we're getting scroll Y progress, and we're going to log out its values in use motion value event. And let's comment out our scaling for a moment. And let's go back and open our developer tools. And now let's scroll down. And here you'll see we get values from 0 to 1. So at about here, we're into about 10% down the way of the page. And you can see if I continue, 20%, 30, 40, 50, and so on, until we get to the very bottom, where we're at 100%, represented by 1. So that means that now, if we wanted to do our scaling with our use transform, well, let's bring all this back in. And instead of basing it on scroll Y, we'll base it on scroll Y progress. And then in the input range, we can define a percentage range. So let's say we want it to start at 0%. And we want the full scaling of the animation to play out over the first 10% of the scroll. So we can do 0.1. And now let's scroll down and let's see the behavior of the scaling. And we should see that it scales up to 1.75 pretty quickly. See, during the first 10% of the scroll. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.